After Pixar bared their soul with their last film, they're back, and it looks like they're taking us to the Italian Riviera for a magical summer vacation that everyone could use right about now. Luca's first trailer has dropped, and already there are a few things we noticed about the story, setting, and the animation style that have a few connections to Disney and Pixar's past films and Studio Ghibli films. So let's dive right in and take a look at everything we know so far about Pixar's Luca. Luca is a coming-of-age story about one young boy experiencing an unforgettable summer, sharing scooter rides, swimming, devouring pasta and gelato. Uh, can you sign me up? Because that sounds like the best summer of my life, too. Luca shares these adventures with his newfound best friend, Alberto, but a deeply held secret threatens all the fun. They are both sea monsters from another world just below the water's surface. Whoa, 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 wait! Did you see that? Now, however, it appears from a few different sources that Luca is a human before gaining the ability to turn into a sea monster. My assumption is Alberto may have given him the power to become a sea monster, or it could be some magical spell put upon Luca until the summer ends. Now, we've seen this before in Brave, Coco, and Soul, where the characters are transformed and must find a way to revert to normal. Now, the film marks the feature debut of director Enrico Casarosa, who worked on Coco, and was the director of the short film La Luna, which was also set in a seaside town and had similar colorful, handmade aesthetic animation. Casarosa has stated that Luca is a very personal story, having grown up in the Riviera himself. Casarosa has also stated that the film is an homage to Fellini and other classic Italian filmmakers. Now, Fellini films were set in the 1960s, and so Luca is set during that similar time. In an interview with Collider, Casarosa stated that there is something about the golden age that feels timeless. The music is wonderful in that time, the design, the cars, the Vespas. So we wanted to capture a little bit of this timelessness of summer. It's part of wanting to take people there in all the little specific ways, a jukebox, the bar, the design of a sign, the boats. So Casarosa wanted to bring as much specificity and richness to the film. And he also stated that Luca will be an homage to Miyazaki films. And if you're a fan of Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli, you've probably already guessed which film Luca resembles the most, Porco Rosso. We first got a glimpse of Luca in an Easter egg in Seoul. When Joe passes by a travel agency, a poster on the window tells us to fly Luca Airlines to Porto Rosso, which is a direct nod to Luca. Studio Ghibli fans are quick to point out that this is also a reference to Porco Rosso. Porco Rosso, also set on the coast of Italy, tells the story of a World War I X-Fighter ace, now living as a freelance bounty hunter chasing air pirates. However, an unusual curse has transformed him into an anthropomorphic pig. Once called Marco Pago, he is now known to the world as Porco Rosso, Italian for red pig. Now, clearly, Luca pays homage to Porco Rosso with the name, setting, animation style, and transformed characters. But there is also a nod to Miyazaki's future boy Conan, which, like Casarosa, was Miyazaki's directorial debut. In Future Boy Conan, Luca's characters bear a striking resemblance, even down to the way they move. Casarosa grew up with Future Boy Conan and stated that it has a snappy poses that show the playfulness of youth. Ghibli's influence can be felt in many Pixar films. John Lasseter himself considers Miyazaki to be a mentor, and Ghibli's storytelling inspires them. It's safe to say we wouldn't have a Pixar without Ghibli. And it's about time we got a Pixar film that looks like a version of Studio Ghibli. Luca also seems to be inspired by our next fish out of water story, The Little Mermaid. Now, The Little Mermaid is a coming of age story about Ariel, who falls in love with Prince Eric and wants to become human. After signing away her voice, as many other musicians do on American Idol, she is transformed into a human and gets to experience life on land with a time limit. Luca and the Little Mermaid share a few story details, and we even get a nod to a funny fish cutting joke at the end of the trailer that reminds you of the scene where the chef does the same thing in The Little Mermaid. Luca is voiced by actor Jacob Tremblay, who was the lead in the film Wonder, and is slated to voice Flounder in The Little Mermaid's live-action remake. Actor Jake Dylan Grazer, who was in Shazam, voices Alberto. The pair befriend a girl from the town called Julia, somewhat of an outsider herself, who will be voiced by newcomer Emma Berman. Luca's parents will also feature in the film, and they're voiced by Maya Rudolph and Jim Gaffigan. Now, since Pixar has announced the release date for Luca to be June 18th of 2021, I suppose if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, 
that case, the summer release will match well with the movie's own seasonal time and, from the look of what we've been teased so far, the playground of the Italian Riviera inhabited by the characters. Luca sounds like another exciting Pixar film, with inspiration from Studio Ghibli, Fellini, and Disney's past, and we can't wait to see this fantastical fable come to life. Looks like Pixar is all about transformations and coming-of-age stories. With their 25th Pixar film, Turning Red, to be released after Luca. Turning Red is about a 13-year-old girl who, when she gets too excited, turns into a giant red panda. So be on the lookout for the Easter egg of Turning Red in Luca.